The Sheep Pig by Dick King Smith, illustrated by Anne Kronheimer. Chapter 1. Guess My Weight. What's that noise? said Mrs Hoggett, sticking her comfortable round red face out of the kitchen window. Listen, there it is again. Do you hear it? What a racket. What a row. Anybody you think someone would be murdered? Oh, dearie me. Whatever it is, just listen to it, will you? Farmer Hoggett listened. From the usually quiet valley below the farm came a medley of sounds. The umpa umpa of a brass band, the shouts of children, the rattling thump of a skittle alley, and every now and then a very high-pitched, very loud, very angry-sounding squealing, lasting perhaps ten seconds. Farmer Hoggett pulled out an old pocket watch as big round as a saucer and looked at it. Fair starts at two, he said. It started. I knows that, said Mrs Hoggett, because I'm late now with all these there cakes and jams and pickles and preserves as is meant to be on the party you stole this very minute. And who's going to take them there, I don't know, where well, you are. But before you does, what is that noise? The squealing sounded again. That noise... Mrs. Hoggett nodded a great many times. Everything that she did was done at great length, whether it was speaking or simply nodding her head. Farmer Hoggett, on the other hand, never wasted his energies or his words. Peg, he said. Mrs. Hoggett nodded a lot more. I oh, thought it was Peg. I said to myself, that's a peg, that is. I mean, nobody round here do keep pegs. There's all sheep for miles around. What a peg doing, I said to myself. Anybody think they'd be killing the poor thing? Have a look when you take this stuff down. What you better do now? Come give us a hand. You can go in the back of the land rover. It isn't raining, won't hurt. Wet your boots before you come in. Yep, said Farmer Hoggett. When he'd driven down to the village and made his delivery to the produce stall, Farmer Hoggett walked across the green, past the Hooper stall and the coconut shine, the Aunt Sally and the skittles and the band, to the source of the squealing noise, which came every now and again from a small pen of hurdles in the far corner against the churchyard wall. By the pen sat the vicar, notebook in hand, and cardboard box on the table in front of him. On the hurdles I'm going to notice, guess my weight ten pence ago. Inside was a little pig. As Farmer Hoggett watched, a man leaned over them and picked it out of a pen. He hefted it in both hands, frowning and pursing his lips in a considering way, while all the time the piglet struggled madly and yelled blue murder. The moment it was put down, it quietened. Its eyes, bright intelligent eyes, met the farmer's. They regarded one another. One saw a tall, thin, brown-faced man with very long legs. The other saw a small, fat, pinky-white animal with very short ones. Oh, do come along, Mr. Hoggett, said the vicar. You never know, maybe yours for ten pence. Guess his weights correctly, and at the end of the day, you could be taking him home. Don't keep pegs, said Farmer Hoggett. He stretched out a long arm and scratched its back. Gently... He picked it up and held it before his face. It stayed quite still and made no sound. Oh, that's funny, said the vicar. Every time so far someone's picked him up, he screamed his head off. He seems to like you. You'll have to have a guess. Carefully, Farmer Hoggett put the piglet back in the pen. Carefully, he took out a ten-pence piece from his pocket and dropped it into the cardboard box. Carefully, he ran one finger down the list of guesses already in the vicar's notebook. Quite variation he said to the vicar. Anything from £20 to 40 so far? He wrote down, Mr Hoggett, and waited, pencil poised. Once again, slowly, thoughtfully, the farmer picked up the piglet. Once again, it remained still and silent. £31, said Farmer Hoggett. He put the little pig down again. And a quarter, he said. Thirty-one and quarter pounds. Thank you, Mr. Hoggett. We should be weighing the little chap at about half past four. Be gone by then. Ah, oh, well, we can always telephone you. If you should be lucky enough to win him. Never win nothing. As he walked back across the green, the sound of the pigs yelling rang out. Someone else had to go. Oh, you never do win nothing, said Mrs. Hoggett. And tea time with her husband, with very few words, had explained matters. Though I've often thought I'd like a pig, but you can feed them scraps and come right to time for Christmas. Just think... Two nice hams, two sides of bacon, pork chops, kidneys, livers, chitlin, trousers. Save his blood for Blackburn. There'll be a phone. Mr. Hoggett picked it up. Oh, he said. <laughs>